With that, we move on to our next item, which is our proposed 2016-17 uh, budget amendment. And trustees, as Ms. Minnick is approaching, um, I think when I'm just looking through this, a lot of the things we've been talking about uh, throughout the year, Allen Elementary, um, transportation services, even um, teaching, we knew we spent a little bit more on that and you know, we knew that all year long. And so some of the adjustments which Ms. Minnick will walk us through here are, are not surprising, but they're always good to see as we try to reconcile um, our budget, you know, our journey through the year. We always learn a lot more and things happen like the Allen Elementary um, uh, water main break that happened under that school, <laughs> but this is a great reconciliation And so we do this every year at this time where we try to get to a final amended budget um, So just so trustees that are are new to us know this is our, a regular part of our work every single year We do this about this time of year because we have a pretty good idea now how we're going to end up for this fiscal year So um, dr. Swift did you want to make some introductory remarks? Thank you, Madam President and trustees, members of the community. Um, the story of our 2016-17 budget, um, first of all, in the next little bit, you're gonna feel like you're in a time machine because the first part of what we'll do by necessity is to balance the checkbook for 2016-17. Then we'll pivot and look at the proposed budget for 2017-18. So we will do these in chronological order and um, maybe just have a one minute timeout in between them because it's hard to keep everything straight sometime. When you look at the 2016-17 budget, the story of our budget reads like the story of our year. And by that I mean, and, and I said to a group the other day, it reads like a Lemony Snicket novel or movie in that it was a series, quite a series of unfortunate and fortunate events. But we think those events as they're happening and yet we know that when we look at a budget sheet, we can read the story of our year in that budget sheet. So trustees, spoiler alert. Here it is. Despite all of those fortunate and unfortunate events that make things look a little crazy on the sheet, um, the outcomes of this 2016-17 budget remain right on target with what, where we thought they would be. So that's the good news and the spoiler alert. In fact, our outcomes, trustees, are within one-third of 1% 1 true to the February amended budget. So I'm always proud of our CFO and our finance team that we watch our numbers so closely that there are no surprises. Um, however, the one thing I think you'll notice as we look at these pages tonight, trustees, when we think of the Allen catastrophe, I know our mind first goes to the physical property. We had to fix the pipe. We had to replace the media center. We had to buy physical stuff. I think what was surprising to me on this budget sheet, and I've highlighted all the spots where Allen impacted, and it's almost every line. I think what's surprising is it's kind of like looking at uh, the credit card statement at home at the end of the month and seeing everything in one place and thinking, oh my, we really did have all that happen. So for example, the impact extends, we paid extra labor to move, to um, help administrate the school, to do all of the work. We re replaced materials. We ran extra transportation runs and routes every day for about seven months. We paid rent for a facility in Ypsilanti. We had, Ms. Colligan had to replace technology and ITD and wiring and, all, and one of those closet things that you recall that we had to buy, um, like the brain of the technology. We had to do the reconstruction. And 
all along, all the way be through, through this, we felt like the bottom line would be that the impact would be about one to one and a half million dollars. So I'm very uh, pleased and frankly relieved to share this evening that our impact tonight as we know it is right at 1.3 million. Now when you see the sheets, it will show 3.8 million Thanks to the insurance, that's a 2.5 million reimbursement. So our actual impact is about 1.3 million. Now, Ms. Minnick is working with the insurance company. They still have not settled all of this out. We're still waiting on quite a number of the bills to be delivered. So I do want to say, trustees, and we have it as a as an asterisk on the bottom of a slide here is we know this will continue to settle out over the coming weeks, but we have a pretty serious line of sight on where we're headed with this settlement. Now, trustees beyond Allen, there were other events. A good one is that there was a little extra in property tax payments. Hallelujah, because sometimes we come and have to tell you that Property tax collections were a little bit lower than we expected, so that was up a little bit. Trustees, you're aware that uh, we're able um, in the coming days to close on a cell tower renewal lease, and that is a big benefit to the district, and we're very grateful for that. We also had increases around our A2 virtual um, um, enrollment and we know that that's a requirement by the state. We do those things and we're proud of them, but that did cost a little bit more because we have more students participating. Um, so, but as we come to look at these numbers, I do want us to remember, and I know trustees that you've been to Allen and you know, we are finishing the year in a solid place. The school is restored. And isn't that a wonderful thing? And we know it could have been worse. What happened on August 18th could have been worse. And we've had several things fall to the good side and some things fall to the negative on this balance sheet, but that our cost is right on target and right within range. So with that, Ms. Minnick will walk you through uh, the slides. Trustees, if you have your sheet, your balance sheet, her slides will just walk you right down it, and it's, and it's pretty straightforward. So with that, uh, thank you, Ms. Minnick. Thank you, good evening, trustees. Dr. Swift, the budget I will be presenting this evening is the proposed final amended budget for 2016-2017. And just to review, as uh, President Stead mentioned, our budget cycle here in Ann Arbor Public Schools is that the original budget for the school year is adopted in June, in June before the school year starts. And then typically in the winter months, we will amend that budget. Because when we adopt the budget in June, we don't know our enrollment. We may not always be certain of our state funding and a variety of other factors. So in the winter when those factors become known, we amend the budget. We then typically adopt a final amendment at this time every year to reflect our best assumptions and our best projections of where our revenues and expenditures in the general fund will actually land. So that's what I'll be presenting for you here tonight. So as Dr. Swift mentioned, the most significant impact to our general fund budget this year is the Allen flood event. And if you recall, at the time of the amendment in the winter, we had agreed that we would not incorporate those associated costs or revenues at that time because they were absolutely not known. Uh, we had some general ideas, but there was so much work yet to be done, we weren't sure what time or what date we might move back into our Allen Elementary, and that would have a significant impact on our rental costs and all those other associated costs. So at that time, it was uh, discussed that we would roll those final costs into this final amendment of the budget. But again, I do want to note that the Allen Flood event claim is still in progress. We have a number of invoices and costs yet to uh, 
pay and uh, shore up. So accordingly, we will do a full accounting of the associated costs and revenue for this event upon the finalization of that insurance claim. Throughout tonight's presentation, I will be referring to recommended increases and decreases over the current amended budget. And I'll be reviewing them in the order of the budget, the budget sheet that Dr. Swift uh, held up for you to review. So it will be in the order as mandated by the state of Michigan that we adopt our budget in. And it also follows the same order as our audit reports that you see every year. So you can follow along with that report if you like. First of all, we'll look at our local revenues. We have a significant increase over our current budget of about $6 million. About 2.5 million of that increase is attributed to our anticipated insurance claim proceeds. We are anticipating at this time about a million and a half in reimbursement for the property and contents of Allen Elementary, which would include the reconstruction of the pipe, uh, replacement of furniture, anything that would enable us to get the elementary school back into its original condition at the time of the flood. And then we, are, we have already received $1 million in reimbursement for what we call extra expense. Extra expense are those costs that we incur in order to keep school running. So those would be rental costs. It would include those incremental transportation costs because our rental facility was further. It would include another set of utility bills for that additional uh, space. So things like that. We also saw, uh, we're seeing an increase in our property tax collections of about $3 million. And as Dr. Swift mentioned, we, have, we are renewing our cell tower contracts, and that is a significant increase as well to our revenues of about $800,000. Turning to our state revenues, we're seeing about a $3.7 million increase there, and that is primarily attributable to the special education cost reimbursements that we receive from the state which is genera generated by increased special education costs. So we do have, uh, and we'll talk more about it later, but we do have some increases in our special needs transportation and staffing. And then under incoming transfers, we are anticipating about $900,000 of a decrease from our current budgeted amount. And that is in regards to our Public Act 18 local special education cost reimbursement. And that is an adjustment. And it's not unusual every year that those uh, payments are adjusted based on such factors as the amount of taxes that were actually collected and available to reimburse our local schools. Uh, it may be an adjustment of costs that were previously reported by any of the districts in the county. Um, right now, uh, we were just notified of this decrease, and it is primarily a result of the amount of taxes that have been collected. Turning now to our expenditure adjustments. In the category of instruction services, we are anticipating or recommending an increase in our budget for basic programs of $2.6 million. And basic programs includes all of our basic instruction for elementary, middle school, high school, preschool programming, and summer school programming. And that increase is primarily, or actually all of these uh, increases are attributable to the Allen flood costs for instructional and media center materials, uh, the A2 virtual course enrollment increases that Dr. Uh, Swift mentioned, and then staff increases to tend to the needs of our special education students. And I'll return just for a minute up, back up to the top. We have instruction services that are classified as pupil support and instructional support as well. And we are anticipating an increase in those expenditures. And those are such things as occupational therapists, speech therapists, teacher consultants. It also includes, includes media center uh, cost, which, as I mentioned, Alan, flood costs impacted our media center. Um, it includes um, those types of expenditures. So we are anticipating some increases there. In the area of other support services, in school, the school administration line, we're anticipating about $528,000 of an increase there. And again, we see Allen uh, materials replacements that are non-instructional 
Um, so things that might have been lost in the main office, um, any type of non-instructional space for any types of um, furniture or equipment that had to be replaced, we would see on that line item. And then of course there's uh, some substitute coverage for our school office personnel. We also had some staff assisting with the Allen flood project in terms of uh, detailing and inventorying the amount of equipment that we lost and then ordering those replacements. Under the area of operations and maintenance, uh, we are uh, proposing an increase in that line item of $3.1 million. And that accounts for the Allen Flood event daily operations and repairs. And what we mean by that is that's the line item where we would see those increased utility costs for, um, for our rental property. And we would see um, snow plowing for both locations and the snow removal for both locations and those kinds of things. We would also see any types of repairs that were not eligible for a sinking fund. We did have some uh, costs related to the flood event that are able and eligible to be funded with sinking fund, but tonight we're focusing on the general fund. In the area of transportation, we are anticipating an increase in those expenditures of $700,000. And that is in regards to our specialized transportation needs and also um, the transportation costs for Allen West. Under the central line item, uh, under this heading, we would account for such things as instructional technology. We would account for such things as workers' compensation. And those are the costs that primarily make up that proposed increase there. We have a new category as a result of the Allen flood that we don't typically see on our budget reports or our audit reports in the general fund, and that is facilities construction. And these are reconstruction costs that have to be absorbed by the general fund that are not sinking fund eligible. And again, uh, as Dr. Swift mentioned, I just want to reiterate that, again, these are our best projections as to where Allen, will, Allen Elementary costs will uh, come out to be, um, but we do anticipate an increase in our expenditures for that event. Here we just want to circle back to the same slide that we saw earlier, just summarizing those costs and those insurance reimbursements. And as Dr. Swift mentioned, we have been anticipating throughout the year a projected net impact to the general fund of about $1.3 million. And so on the earlier slides, <laughs> We noted that Allen is kind of a vein or a thread through all of those different categories. And again, the total uh, projected cost of the general fund approximates $3.8 uh, $3 million with projected insurance reimbursements of $2.5 million. Once we incorporate all of the changes noted on the earlier slides, we anticipate total general fund revenues for this school year to uh, be around $235 million, $235,343,070. And we anticipate total expenditures and transfers to be $235,062,128. And that results in a net change in our fund balance of $280,942. And this is a slight increase from our current amended budget. And as a result of these changes, we are anticipating to have an ending fund balance in June of $21,788,900, I'm sorry, $21,788,964. When we started the school year, our fund balance approximated 9.6% of last year's actual expenditures. As a result of these changes, we are anticipating that at the end of this school year, our fund balance will represent 9.3% of this year's expenditures. I'm happy to answer any questions at all that you may have on this final budget amendment. I know it's a lot to process, and I think the way you've summarized it actually is, is great. I think why people aren't hearing so many questions, though, is because all along we've been talking about where this is going to hit our budget. So it's, I love your <laughs> highlighting all these different areas, but um, I think you guys did a phenomenal job estimating uh, you know, what the net impact of the Allen Flood event would be, including the decisions we made to go with that, to keep that community together, find a building, which we were so fortunate to find one that actually could fit that whole student body, 
um, and then transport all of those kids and families, which of course is even more than our typical transportation costs because a lot of the folks that go to Allen Elementary walk there. And for a while we were busing all of them to their um, Allen Elementary West location. So I think you did a nice job preparing the board for where this, how this would flow, and then your, your net impact to general fund dollars of 1.3 was very close to what you were saying all along, so thank you. And I was calculating this little nuance that we have with our state law <laughs> that we do our um, fund balance, ending fund balance as a percent of revenue, not expenses, which makes no sense, but anyway. I didn't include the percent of revenue at this time. Yeah. Uh, I included the percent of expenditures at this time right. because that's what we're so used to. Because that actually to. also makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and we've been tracking that for so many years right. that we have a little bit of a context for that percentage. Exactly. But I did calculate it real quick, and it looks like it's about the same as the percent of um, expenses. Yes. It's 9.28%, so 9.3%. Mm -hmm. percent. Okay. Um, and I appreciate your pointing that out because it is detailed at the bottom of the handout. Okay. It's a little bit small, but at the very bottom it shows the fund balance as a ah, percent yes. of revenue and, a, and as a percent of expenditure. So I'm yeah. sorry, I was remiss in not mentioning that. That's great. So just a reminder to our community, um, the state sort of watch list, if you will, now uh, gets triggered if districts fall below 5%, uh, if their fund balance falls below 5% of revenue, operating revenue, which is a really strange statistic, but that's what they selected. So we watch that every year, and we've um, certainly been on a journey there, but it's nice to see us not uh, so close to the 5% mark. So that's, that's really great to see as well. This is our first briefing on this. Obviously, we'll you know, take action on it a little bit later, but if you have other questions or comments that come up, that would, we'll obviously be monitoring those.